and welcome to Good Witch Knits. This is a vlog style making podcast coming to you from Sacramento, California. I chat about knitting, spinning, natural dyeing, and things related to the fiber enthusiast community. My name is Jillian. You can find me on Instagram as Good Witch Knits, and there's also a Ravelry group for this podcast. Welcome. Today, we have some mixed, partially cloudy skies here in Sacramento, California, which is great because it's a little bit cooler. I can wear my cumulus blouse, which I absolutely love. I chat about this recently finished object more in last week's podcast. I knit this out of lichen lace mohair silk, and it's a pattern by Petite Knits. And can you believe that color? <laughs> the color is a uh, shrub. Love it so much. So if you want to care more about that, go ahead and check out last week's podcast. These partially cloudy skies are great for being able to wear this. It's cooled off a bit, but the clouds are coming in and out. There's some moments where I'm going to look like a ghost and some moments where it's going to look kind of dark and spooky in here. So apologies in advance for the lighting, but I really do like recording with natural light. All right, that disclaimer aside, let's jump right in to what I've been working on. First off, I have a finished object. Well, it still has the ends unwoven in, so I guess it's more, as Tommy from Squirrel Pie Productions would say, a mofo, a mostly finished object. This is the Alfama. It's a pattern by Amy Christoffers, originally designed for a broco yarn called Regatta. That yarn is a cotton tape, kind of has a marled effect to it. It's really great. I decided that I was going to mix things up and knit this using a wool in the gang yarn. It's their tensile tape bamboo yarn. And the yarn's great. The pattern's great. I really hate them together. I did not swatch for this, and if I had swatched, I may have realized and noticed. I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera. Yeah, you can see just how loose and open this fabric is. If I'm wearing this over a shirt that says anything, you can completely read everything that's on the back. This is like wearing a mesh top. And that's just not the look I'm going for. So I have fun memories of knitting this and nearly finishing it on my trip to Miami, but I'm pretty sure that this mofo is soon going to become silver yarn noodles. What I mean is I think I'm going to frog this. I think I'm going to rip this out. Because again, the pattern was very clear. I may even knit this sweater again using the yarn it was designed in. And I'm definitely gonna use this yarn for something else. If you have any recommendations of a top that uses, um, I think this is, a, is this a bulky yarn? I think it's a bulky yarn, this tape yarn. If you have any recommendations for a summer top that calls for bulky yarn, let me know. But yeah. I'm gonna rip this out. So it's important that I share this on here. I think on Instagram and social media, we see all these beautiful finished objects that people make, but not everything works out. And I'm definitely guilty of this, of only showing the pretty shiny happy things. Sometimes I make stuff and it's just really not what I like. I mean, I guess this might be to some other people's tastes. It's not a complete knitting fail, but yeah. I spent a week making this, and now I'm going to rip it out, and I'm sharing that with you. And I'm totally fine with it. I'm not someone who's really particular and super pained to rip stuff out. I frogged a sweater, essentially a whole back to a sweater, on an earlier podcast. If you want to check that out, I think it's like episode 10 or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm not too precious about my knitting. That's all. Not Knitting doesn't always work out. All right, moving right along. Uh, next up, I have a project that's living in my new Rumpelstiltskin bag that I got at local yarn store day. More on that at the end of the podcast. I am knitting, if you can believe it, a pattern that everyone and their mom has knit. 
This is The Weekender. The Weekender is a pattern by Andrea Mallory. It's very, very popular. It has more than 6,000 completed projects on Ravelry. Um, this is where I'm at so far. I cast it on. It's very bright. I wonder if you're going to be able to see that because you can see it's a white yarn. I know. Can you believe it? I'm knitting with white. I cast this on on Saturday. It's now Tuesday and I have not knit on it for two days because I am having horrible wrist pain. Yes, I've talked about this in the past. My Flom cardigan, which is all in a fisherman's rib, is on complete hold because my wrist pain has been too much. Um, for some reason, my wrist is really hurting, and I've been trying to only knit in small doses, or now I'm just totally taking a break from knitting because the pain's gotten so bad. Yeah, I gotta figure this out because I plan on knitting for many, many more years. I cannot wear out my wrist already. So something I'm trying with this, this yarn, this pattern, is I am teaching myself to knit continental. I notice that if I don't really get the wrist pain so much when I'm knitting continental. So this is kind of a fun experiment. My gauge is changing. I don't know if you can notice, but down here, this is where I was knitting with my English, I think it's called flicking. My finger doesn't actually ever leave the needle to wrap the yarn and throw it, but um, I do traditionally hold my yarn in my right hand. And then up here, where it gets a bit looser, that's where I've switched to continental knitting. We'll see. It's an experiment, a work in progress. Okay, so why am I knitting this? I think I'll get a lot of wear out of the weekender, even though I tend to be a little bit too cool for school and I don't want to knit things that everyone else is knitting or has knit. Um, I think it'll just be a really practical, everyday kind of transition piece to wear. I also just had to knit that pattern out of this yarn and a little story about how I discovered this yarn. So I'm knitting the Weekender out of Juniper Moon Cumulus. I don't know if you can see that. I love the light. Um, and how I discovered this yarn. I work at Rumpelstiltskin, a local yarn store here in Sacramento on Tuesdays and Fridays. And a woman came in with her friend who um, is blind and wanted some assistance picking out yarn. And the help that she asked for was um, she asked that I describe the colors of the yarns and she would take each skein off the shelf and feel it. And it was really cool. It was a different way of experiencing this fiber that I thought I knew pretty well. Um, and it made me realize that I really lack language and appreciation for color. Like, I really there's a lot to learn about color and how to describe it, um, so yes, there's that. But it also helped me appreciate the texture of yarns in a different way and open my eyes to this yarn, which is the yarn that she eventually went with to make her sweater. And it's a yarn that I just always kind of wrote off. This yarn is 94% cotton and 6% nylon, and cotton gets kind of a bad rap. I just kind of thought, oh, that's just like a baby knit yarn over there. I don't know what I would ever knit out of it. This yarn, even though it's cotton, is so light. This in the store, it's next to like the Brooklyn Tweed, Quarry, and Shelter. And when you lift them up, they feel the same, the same like light loftiness. It's so soft. I don't know if it's going to behave the same way that other cotton behaves. I've knit a sweater out of cotton before and it stretched, stretched, stretched. Cotton's known for doing that, so I don't know if that's going to happen with a sweater. I'm knitting a little bit cropped, so even if it does stretch out, then it'll just be like a normal length sweater. But yeah, do you ever have this experience where you find a yarn and you just have to make something out of that yarn? That was my experience with, with this. I knew I just had to make 
a weekender out of this yarn. It's going to be just a perfect everyday throw it on. So a little bit about the color I chose. This is bright white and a real departure from the things that I normally knit with. Uh, first off, I'm a messy person and I don't like doing laundry that much. So white maybe is an ill-informed choice. Uh, I do have a pair of white pants that I like to wear, wear from time to time and I feel like such a put together person when I wear them because if they're not stained it means I really have my shit together, you know? But this doesn't always have to be white. So if my weekender does end up getting stained or if it even gets stained in the process of me knitting it since I'd like to take my knitting places um, and knit while I'm eating stuff like pizza. It's okay, because I can just dye it. I, I end up, if it ends up dulling, I can just dye this another color, and that'd be fun. So, I haven't knit on this recently, in the past two days, and it feels like eons to not have knit for two days, uh, to try and give my wrist a rest. Hope it gets better soon, because how can I have a knitting podcast if I can't knit? I think that is all of the knitting content that I actually have for you today, but I have two other things to talk about. I had a very fiber-filled weekend. This weekend was local yarn store day, which is a holiday dedicated to celebrating brick and mortar knitting stores. Um, and yeah, I was working at Ripple Still Skin. They released this tote that folks got with purchase and what else did they have? These stitch markers. So you could also get these stitch markers that have Rumpelstiltskin's little symbol of a lamb on there. So that new swag, that was fun. Um, Rumpelstiltskin also had a photo booth which was super fun. Uh, I had a great time taking pictures with customers in the photo booth. Um, customers brought in things that they had made with yarn that they got in the shop. Hashtag Rumple Made. And it was also the kickoff of the mohair make-along. So Rumple Stillskin is hosting a make-along with anything with mohair in it. Uh, they got a big shipment of lichen and lacen and some storyteller yarn. So all that, there's, they're still available in the shop if you want to come in. Uh, but yeah, local yarn store day was super fun. Super crazy, but super fun. Thanks so much if you came out and said hi. I had a great time with you. Um, what else? I had an unexpected fiber fill day the next day on Sunday. For years, my family's been going to what has traditionally been called the Scottish Games, but it's now called the Celtic Games out in Woodland. Uh, my family does have Scottish heritage. We are of the MacDougall clan. Uh, it was a lot of fun going to check that out. I haven't gotten to go in a few years. And I don't think I've gone since I've been really enthusiastic about knitting, spinning, and fiber. And I didn't realize there's a bunch of folks doing fiber crafts there from natural dye there were a lot of wheels out and knitting too so that was really cool i stopped by julie's booth she has some sheep that she brings with her um and chatted with her a little bit she's some she's a i guess like a farmer based at Yupa city I got this little pocket spindle, the cute little bead on the top, just thought it was cute. So I was spinning on that and walking around. She showed off a spindle that she had custom made by a glass blower, and I knew I had to have one. So, Guy Moore is a glass blowing artist. He said that he's kind of new to the festival circuit scene. 
um, and his wife apparently does a lot of fiber crafts. So he created these two uh, drop bottom whirl spindles, and I knew having a glass spindle is just so badass. I had to have one, and of course one for my very good fiber friend, Rigel, who taught me how to spin. So these, they, I realize they do kind of look like little mini bongs. They're not, they're for spinning. You would put uh, what I think is called a half hitch on the top and spin, spin like that. The corks are to remove and put some kind of weight if you wanna change the weight of the spindle. Aren't they absolutely gorgeous? The stakes are high. <laughs> Spinning with a glass drop spindle, you can't drop it. And they're just so beautiful, even if they are just works of art in my life. I love them so much. So thank you, Guy. It was really fun to meet you and watch you blow this glass. And I hope we start a trend of glass drop spindles. I think they're so cool. Yes. I very carefully put them back down. And that's what I have for this week. Thank you so much for checking out my little corner of the internet. Um, stay tuned for next week because I have some plans for other things I'm going to cast on. They may be mohair related. Join along in Ruffle Still Skin's Mohair Make Along. Uh, yeah, do you have anything mohair that you're working on or want to work on? Let me know. Put it in the comments. Um, and as always, thank you so much for joining me here. I love connecting with folks near and far who are equally excited and nerdy about fiber-related things. So thank you so much, and take care. Until next time, bye.